newest viewer. As it is officially one month into spring, let it be known that I have fully donned the romantic, soft aesthetic of the season. And being the biggest Bridgerton fan like most of the world right now, I am going to take you through my idea of a Bridgerton-inspired morning routine. Keep in mind, this is definitely not my normal everyday routine. This is something I do for myself on a self-care day or the weekend. I love to have fun and make life as enjoyable as I can. So while this might not be realistic for every day, it makes me happy and I think that's all that really matters. The day begins with my internal alarm clock waking up around 8.30 and while I wish I could just sleep in forever, I always get excited to open up the windows and to see the morning sun. Morning sun is just beautiful and I always feel happier if I get to see it before it gets too high in the sky. Is anyone else friends with the morning sun? It's just, ah, I love it. Since this is a self-care day, I love to jump back in bed, drink some water, and then just enjoy that lazy morning feeling. I've been listening to classical music non-stop, so this morning I put on some classical music from one of my favorite playlists, fluffed the pillows, and then read a chapter from this beautiful edition of the second Bridgerton book, The Viscount Who Loved Me. So then I put on some Bridgerton in the background while I wrote in this five minute journal. I do this every morning. It's a new habit that I have developed and I love it. Not only is it utterly beautiful, but it's so simple. It has one page for every day where you write down what you're grateful for, what would make the day great, daily affirmations, and then in the evening you write down the highlight and something you learned from that day. I'm obsessed with it. When I finally decide to get out of bed, I always have to make the bed. I am a tidier. I'm not necessarily a deep cleaner. I don't like weekend chores, but I like my spaces to be tidy and to look nice. I've gotten a lot of questions about this duvet cover. It's from Amazon and I do have it linked in my Amazon storefront that's down in the description box. Since I'm romanticizing my life to the fullest, I decided to use my washstand to wash my face today. I love this washstand. It's absolutely perfect. And thinking about the places it has been or the people that have used it and the way it's part of history, ugh, it just makes me so happy. In the morning, I usually just cleanse with water, but it's that time of the month. So I'm using my Curology today since my skin needed a little bit of extra help. I started spraying my bed with perfume last year and now it's something that I do daily. I feel like it just gives the room such a luxurious feel. Today I'm using Replica's Under the Lemon Tree perfume and uh, it feels like being on the Amalfi Coast during the summertime. So then I brush my teeth and after that it's time for hair and makeup. But before I get started with that, I think now is a wonderful moment to tell you about today's sponsor which is Birch Living. Like mostly everyone, sleep is extremely important to me. And to be honest, I look forward every day to going to bed or even taking an afternoon nap or just lounging in my bed in the morning. I love sleep. <laughs> I've been using a birch mattress for the past year and every night I feel like I'm sleeping on one of those fluffy cloud-like mattresses that you sleep on at fancy five-star hotels. Like, it's amazing. So Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are not only stylish and comfortable, but environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made right here in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. I ordered the Birch Lux mattress, which is a premium upgrade to their original well-loved Birch natural mattress. 
The mattresses are created with breathability, cooling, and support in mind and offer increased airflow. Something I really love is that I know the mattress that I'm sleeping on is made with raw materials and sourced straight from nature, both being comfortable and durable. And in addition to that, Birch is committed to being better for the planet. I love that throughout the creation of their mattresses, Birch ensures that their materials are produced and harvested sustainably. So like I said, I've had a Birch mattress for over a year now and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's so easy to set up and the quality compared to my old mattress is just unmatched. With your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. And the best part is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the US. So if you're looking for a new bed, definitely check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash darlingdesi for $400 off your mattress plus two free pillows. Now let's move on to my makeup routine. <laughs> I have been asked by a lot of you to share my makeup routine, but I've never shared it before because I honestly have no idea what I'm doing with makeup. But here it finally is, it's nothing special, but I start with applying this fresh toner all over my face and then follow that with moisturizer, but I forgot to film that part. So then I move on to this Laura Mercier I hope I said that right. Laura Mercier Blurring Primer. I love the way this primer feels on my skin. It makes my pores look smaller and my skin feels so soft afterwards. I've been experimenting with foundations recently and I still haven't found anything that I really love, but right now I'm using a mixture of a NYX and Maybelline foundation. I like the way the colors look when they blend together. And I just use my fingers to blend it in because I just know that if I use a beauty blender, I will not clean it enough. Then I go in with the NARS Creamy Concealer. This is one of my favorite products. Definitely more on the pricey side, but uh, it's amazing. I use it to cover my blemishes or any redness. Then I use this Nudies Bronzer Stick. Again, I really have no idea what I'm doing here, but it seems to work. So I just put it on the sides of my face and then a little bit on my nose and under my nose. And I blend it out with a brush and then use my fingers to blend it out more precisely on my nose. But I don't worry about it too much because putting powder on top of it later will blur it down even more. Another one of my favorite products, this Rare Beauty blush is just the perfect pink color. I put it on my cheeks, my nose, and I don't believe that there is such thing as too much blush, especially having blonde hair. If I don't add enough color to my cheeks, I just look kind of washed out. Then I go in with this Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer, and I use this as a highlighter. So I put it on any high points on my face, right above where I put my blush and then usually my nose and my eyes as well. Just like the blush, I don't think there's such thing as using too much highlighter, but that's the fun thing about doing makeup. It's a form of self-expression, so there's no right or wrong way to really do it. So I set all the liquid products with the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Setting Powder. I love this powder. I apply it once in the morning and it stays all day. My face doesn't end up getting greasy and you don't have to use a lot of it so it lasts for a long time. Then I go in with this Milani blush because the powder does kind of mute the color of the liquid blush and this just kind of brings all that color back to life. I use the first one mostly over my nose and the second one over my cheeks and upward towards my eyes. Then I use this Milani highlighter palette. I like using the goldish color in the middle to go over my cheeks, nose, forehead, and Cupid's bow. I also put some right on the inside of my eyes to just brighten them up a little bit. For my freckles, there are two different methods that I use. For the first method, I use this Anastasia or Anastasia brow pen, and I just do it over my nose and next to my nose where I want the freckles to be. It's very light, so the freckles look more natural than if you were using something like eyeliner. For the second method, I take a bobby pin and using the eyeshadow, I just kind of tap it into my face where I want the freckles to be. I think of it like copying and pasting. With this method, you definitely want to take a brush and blend it in a bit with the powder or blush after to make the freckles look a bit more natural. Then for my eyes, I just keep it really simple with a creamy white on my lid. 
and some brown that I use for my freckles on the rest of my lid. And sometimes I use bronzer, but I like to keep it really simple and light because one, I have no idea how to do eyeshadow. And two, I just like the way my eyes look with less eyeshadow. So it's a win-win. <laughs> For my eyeliner, I use this Pixie Lash Ink. It's my favorite. It goes on this really reddish color, but then ends up turning a really pretty dark brown. Again, I literally have no idea what I'm doing. I've watched so many tutorials on how to do eyeliner, and yet I still feel like I have no clue how to do it. I use this combo for my mascara, but recently I've just been using the blue one. It makes my lashes look longer and it's relatively easy to wash off at night, which I appreciate. Then moving on to my favorite part of my makeup routine, the lip products. I adore the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Pencil Liner. I do my bottom lip normally, but then I do overline my cupid's bow area just a little bit. I didn't used to do this, but I like how it makes my upper lip look a little bit more full. This has been my holy grail lip product recently. I am obsessed with this. It's the Rose Ink Lip Crayon and it is so buttery. It's this perfect muted blushy pink color. I usually prefer a matte lip, but sometimes I'm feeling glossy and today is a glossy day. So I went with this Ulta Juice Infused Lip Oil. This is by far my favorite gloss. My only complaint is that it tastes quite bad if you get some in your mouth accidentally. But other than that, it is the best. Then for my brows, I use the same brow pencil that I use for my freckles, just to fill in any spots that need it. And then I set them in place with the NYX Brow Glue, which works so well. It's like hairspray for your eyebrows. I'm not really sure how to shape them at all, so I just brush it through and kind of mess with them until I'm happy with how they look. And here you can see my obsession with highlighter again. I just can't stop. So to finish everything off, I've set my face with the Milani Make It Last Matte Setting Spray. I have naturally oily skin, so I prefer a matte finish to a dewy finish. And that's it. After my makeup, I wash my hands and use my absolute favorite hand cream. I don't use any other lotion. Anything from Bath & Body Works just doesn't even compare. For my hair, I already had some loose curls from the day before, so I just brushed it out and then used some dry shampoo to revive that volume that I had lost. I swear by using dry shampoo, especially for bangs, it gives them that wispy effect then I attempted to get my bangs to have some sort of shape by kind of curling them back towards my head just so that they don't fall flat. For my hair, I pulled half of it up and then just did a simple braid. This is a great thing to do when you have a few curls left at the bottom. And then I just asked Jared to help me finish it off with a ribbon. <laughs> After choosing a flowy dress, I finished up by applying perfume. I love how this turned out. It is so beautiful. The dress is so beautiful. It's from Amanti and it absolutely passes the twirl test. Then I put on some music from season two of Bridgerton and chose a light pink nail polish for today. You guys will finally be able to see my nails actually painted. Most of the time they're messy and half painted because I'm an anxious girl and sadly nail polish on me just doesn't last more than a few hours, but I will continue painting them nonetheless. It's now breakfast time and I will be choosing a recipe from this Bridgerton cookbook. I adore the cover and I love that each recipe has a photo for reference. Today I'm going to make the Daphne Dearest crepes. You guys know me, I cannot pass up sweets for breakfast. I realized that I don't actually know the difference between crepes and European pancakes and British pancakes. When I was in England, I ordered pancakes and they came out looking like crepes. My favorite is actually German pancakes. My mom made them almost weekly when I was younger and even now when I visit her, I always ask her to make them. 
I'll include a blooper at the end of the video, but the first time I poured the batter into the pan, there was way too much butter and the crepe just fell apart. I wanted to be like the chefs and flip the crepe up by tossing it, but that turned out to be so much harder than I anticipated. <laughs> Ready? Uh, oh! Oh! I got it! Yay! For toppings, I decided to go with a cream cheese and passion fruit curd. While prepping for this recipe, I googled what pairs well with passion fruit, and some pastry chefs said raspberry and dark chocolate. So that is the pairing that I decided to go with. And then it was finally time to eat. Today, for my breakfast tea, I chose the Enchanted Slumber Tea from Fairy Tale Teas. It's the most beautiful looking tea, and it actually has edible glitter in it. Truly the epitome of a self-care breakfast for me. So often, it really is the little things that make me so happy, like glitter in tea. I was so surprised I actually made this breakfast because it was so good. So I had to have Jared come do a little taste okay. test. Take a second. Isn't that so good? That was really good. The chocolate with the passion fruit. Mm. <laughs> Give it back. Okay. Thank you. It is pretty so good though, right? And because I know some of you might wonder, no, I did not just eat sweets for breakfast. I also had a bowl of oatmeal with my favorite blueberry lavender milk from Trader Joe's with some fresh blueberries on top. If you're watching this, I figure you might like Bridgerton or reading or both. So I want to share some books to read. Edenbrook is the epitome of the perfect Regency romance. Blackmore is by the same author and they're both proper romances. Emma has such a fun cast of characters that remind me a lot of the characters in Bridgerton. And then Bringing Down the Duke is a great option if you're new to historical romance. I recommend this one to anyone who doesn't know where to start with the genre. I will never stop raving about Georgette Hare. Never. Ever. She is so witty and funny to me. Lisa Kleypas has been my go-to author this spring. I am devouring her books one after another. A Proper Charade. This one is for you. It is such a sweet romance that had me in an absolute book hangover after I finished it. It's so good. This is Mary Bennett's story. It takes place before, during, and after Proud and Prejudice. It's phenomenal. If you've watched the show but haven't read the Bridgerton books yet, I highly recommend them. I'm still making my way through the series and I'm enjoying every book so much. It didn't seem right to plan a Bridgerton themed morning routine and not take a morning promenade through a beautiful park. In my case, this is the Utah State Capitol, and during this time of year, it is fully surrounded by pink and white cherry blossoms. This particular day, it was a bit windy and the blossoms were falling from the trees, and being so early in the morning, there was hardly anyone there. I definitely had a bit of a main character moment. I was having so much fun, and despite it being just a bit cold, the sun felt so good and I had the best time. I know historically speaking, the people from Regency England wouldn't have afternoon tea probably this early, but I couldn't help myself. Surprisingly, I've never experienced afternoon tea anywhere other than making it for myself at home, so I was very excited for this. I ordered this dandelion chai tea that was specifically made for this location here at the Grand America Hotel. It was absolutely 
amazing. I've never tasted anything like it. It was so good. I cherished every bite and tried not to take a single second of this experience for granted. For the scone, I put the clotted cream on first, which is highly debated between Devon and Cornwall. In Cornwall, they put the jam on first, and the Devon method is to put the cream on first. All that matters to me is that either way, it tastes like absolute heaven. At this point, it's time to wrap up the morning routine, so I headed home and indulged in my comfort, my favorite hobby, my safe place, a book. 100% absolute self-care. Thank you for coming with me on this morning routine today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope springtime is treating you with soft, gentle kindness. And I hope that you take some time for yourself this week. You deserve it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye for now, friends. actually looks like. Baby dropped your thing. <laughs> oh no, I need more. I think I added too much butter. <laughs> <laughs> that was too hot. <laughs> it needs to cool down. <laughs> oh my gosh.